this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel. Now, what I'd like to do uh, in this video is follow up on a promise that I made, which was to uh, show you my board game collection. Okay. Um, and just to give you a heads up, there, there are board games here from the 1970s, uh, 19, well, 19, late 1970s, actually, I guess, uh, from the 1980s, from the 1990s, and some from the 2000s. Um, some of these games, uh, you know, we played a couple of times, two or three times or a handful of times and they didn't stick, but um, they were fun, so I've kept them with me. Uh, some of these board games, um, you know, I personally and family members and friends, we spent hours upon hours upon hours, uh, some into the days upon days upon days playing these things. Um, and I sort of grew up with board games, um, you know, some of the classics, I guess. Um, well, Monopoly for sure. I still have Monopoly set, a couple of Monopoly sets here. Uh, you know, Game of Life when you're a kid and Sorry and Clue and stuff like this. And those are fantastic games. Um, slowly my gaming career kicked off into, um, into playing um, pretty hardcore Avalon Hill games, uh, more complicated games, strategy games and stuff like this. And I do have uh, the original Avalon, uh, some of the original Avalon Hill games uh, we bought, okay, uh, and they've, they've definitely stayed with me and they're not going anywhere anytime soon, uh, even though sometimes you don't get to play them for a very long time because it's hard to find people in the same mindset uh, that are willing to spend maybe a weekend uh, playing a board game, right? So let's take a look at uh, what I have here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to start off with a couple of um, small games that I have here um, and these two have been with me um, it's the same game one was the portable version one was the home version um, and these stayed uh, you know have stayed with me I haven't played these for a long time but they stayed with me for a very long time a fantastic game um, and it's Mastermind uh, if you've ever played this game you know how awesome it is. And if you've never um, played it, it's an amazing game. And this is the, this is the one we used to take with us uh, as a travel mastermind game. And you put your selection in there, the person who's putting the pattern together and the person guessing puts the, puts the stuff on here. And this was the, and this was the whole version. Uh, and these are original versions that we bought. Uh, we bought these in the 1980s, um, I believe. It could have been late 70s. I don't know uh, what the copyright on this thing is, when the date for it is. So I'm going to put this one aside. Um, so that's one of the games that's been with me the longest. Okay. And just a heads up, um, any of these games that I'm showing you, um, if you wanna, because we're not gonna open every single one, otherwise we'll be here all day for like eight hours looking through the pieces and stuff like this, right? Um, but if there's any games here that you wanna take a closer look at, and if uh, enough people want it, I'll definitely happily, gladly uh, show these um, games to you guys in detail. Uh, some of these games I haven't played for a long time, so I've forgotten some of the rules and stuff like this, but I'll be happy to show them to you, okay? Um, and after the mastermind, there's a, another game that we played a lot when I was really young. Okay. And it's, uh, double. Okay. This game. And I've kept this original one with me because I think, uh, we just had so much fun with it. And these are the, these are the sticks to it. Right. Beautiful pattern. Um, so this thing's been with us for, uh, or been with me for a very, very long time. Um, I never got rid of it. Okay. Um, a couple of games that we've played a fair bit is, um, when we were kids and I still love to play is, um, Dominoes. Oops. And this set has been in the family for a very long time and I've inherited it. This was my great grandma's set. Okay. Um, so Domino's is absolutely magnificent and I bought the, uh, here, let me show you this one. And I bought this one in Cuba, um, when I traveled Cuba in the 1990s. Um, and in Cuba, uh, Domino's is huge, huge, 
um, in Latin America, uh, Mexico too. And this is the pieces. They're nice wood pieces, large. Take a look. It's a nice set. I haven't played too much on this one. Um, I just bought this one uh, well, because it was traveling and there's a lot of people playing and uh, we wanted to play a little bit while we we're traveling uh, but the one i play with is um, is this one for sure because i love the sound when you're mixing it up and these are uh, i don't know what they are they're sort of like tile or ivory i don't think they're ivory i hope they're not ivory but uh mix it around they and they hit each other and it's a fantastic sound very hypnotic uh, a great game to play and there's different variations of it um, another thing that we've had uh, for a very very long time of course um, this is my traveling chess set okay uh, let me open this up well wow, i'm not gonna open everything up so this is my traveling chess set these are the pieces here right and in here is uh, Let's see if you can see it. It's sort of the leather or pleather, whatever you want to call it, you lay it out. Um, the bad thing with this is you need a flat surface to do it. Um, with a wooden hard board, um, it's, uh, uh, you know, you can play it anywhere. This one, you need a sort of a flattish surface to play. And uh, as you know, I was going through the news, I found uh, one of the things I came across was, uh, the pieces for original chessboard and these are nice little wind pieces uh, I don't know if that's zooming in or not nice little wind pieces look fantastic right so this is the original uh, uh, the chessboard that we had. Uh, I don't know. I don't think all the pieces are there. I just pulled this out of a box. And um, we do have another chessboard, a marble chessboard that's still in storage. And when I do get that, um, move that here, I will definitely show you that chessboard. It's a beautiful board. It's uh, large. Uh, it's fantastic and another game um, I forgot to put it in this pile here that uh, um, I always have with me and it's the, probably the game that I've played the most in my life uh, where we made the video with me and my grandma playing backgammon and um, you know I showed you my uh, grandmother's backgammon board I have my own backgammon board here so let me go grab it I'm going to show you that one as well okay So this is my backgammon board and this is sort of a carrying case that my grandma made <laughs> and this is uh, my, this is my backgammon board and like I mentioned I love um, I love playing on wood right and uh, this thing the pieces it's a nice board. I really like playing on this board as well. And the dice for this are fantastic. Let me show you the dice on these. Let me put this guy here. I know I said I was going to open all the, all the boards, but this stuff is, for us, is fantastic for me anyway. They're like teeny weeny, so they spin a lot, right? And this one has got a, the red, the one piece is like red, and this one's black, normal like the rest. And this is like super small. Okay. And these things, when you hit them, they just go spin like crazy. Fun to watch. Fun to watch. Let me put this guy here. Okay, what else do we got here? Um, that's the chessboard. Let me put these guys on the table. I'm going to show you this big thing that we got um, that I've had for a long time. Okay. Um, actually, these little guys. I think I'm just going to leave you here. But we we have we'll make sure we have enough room for the bigger guys. Okay. So let me show you this thing. Now this thing. 
I have to crack this open. Oh yeah, of course, and we have, you know, for cards, play a lot of cards. And this is, um, what do you call it? Um, poker chips, basically. Chips for playing cards and gin rummy. And I played a lot of gin rummy and poker and blackjack and whatnot, right? Um, but let me show you this. There was a period in my life where um, I made my money off uh, gambling and we played a lot of poker and I would go to Vegas a lot for, um, I guess I've been to Vegas a fair bit of time. Uh, last time I was there, it was towards the end of the 1990s, 2000s or so. Uh, but one thing we used to do when we used to, um, you know, I used to hold poker games in my house. And uh, one thing that I, there was a couple of us that were into was craps. So about, I guess, 15, 17 years ago or so, um, I made us a sort of a crap table that we could play on. So let me show you this thing, okay? <laughs> I put this thing together, okay? Um, like 15 years ago or so, and I just pulled this out of storage. And in the previous place we were in, it's very light. So I had this as a wall decor. Uh, just as a piece on the wall, okay? So let me show you this thing. This is the way it sits. It's got the hooks here, right? Beautiful. Oops. Let's put this guy here. the crafts table goes uh, I made this thing it's sort of uh, like the the cloth that they use at casinos you can just buy these things they're fairly well within reason they're not um, they're fairly inexpensive the cloth is I can't remember how much I paid for it and I took like a little foamy thing that I had and uh, put wood behind it and I sort of stapled the back so it's fairly solid it's fairly it, uh, you can flush, right? You can move the chips around on it. And um, of what I'm going to do, um, if you've been watching the videos and stuff like this, um, for the language of mathematics and math in real life, there's a video that I made uh, for dice, the probability distribution of two, si uh, two die, right? Two six-sided di die. And uh, at some point, what we're going to do, uh, because I, in my opinion, um, Playing games, board games, especially dice games, has taught me a lot about uh, statistics. So um, one thing I do plan on doing is creating a series for um, math in real life on how to play craps because 
Dice Games, the probability distribution for dice and crafts is an amazing teaching tool when it comes to dealing with fractions, multiplying fractions, and getting an idea of um, you know how probability distribution works, especially a normal distribution, right? Uh, so at some point we're going to work on this on this table, okay? Uh, just to give you guys a heads up, um, just a couple of die here. Now, as far as some of the board games that I have, um, hundred percent. Uh, I should shoot the code, right? 100% uh, risk, right? Risk is a fantastic game to play if you want to play a nice, simple rule uh, type of game. So this has been around uh, with us for, uh, God, I think we've had that board for a while. I don't know what version that is. That was either in the 2000s or 1990s. Uh, a couple other games or one other game that... You know, has been around, played a lot, Monopoly, 100%. Haven't played it for you know a number of years now, but it's a fantastic game to have if you want to play. And uh, it couldn't help it at some point. They put out a Star Wars Monopoly set. Um, and I think this was in the 2000s um, that we ended up buying this. Okay. Um, as far as games that are like risk are concerned Let's put these guys back. Okay. as far as uh, games that are like risk are concerned that are absolutely amazing games um, that I've played a lot like this game I'm going to show you we've played an insane amount and it is absolutely a brilliant game. And we got introduced to this game, uh, or I got introduced to this game in uh, the 1980s, I believe. Um, I think so. And it used to be another company that owned it. Now it's, it looks like it's Avalon Hill, Avalon Hill's back or something. Uh, but this is the set. Uh, and the game, let me just tell you what the game is. The game is Axis and Allies. Okay. It's a... Uh, World War II strategic, strategic game, I guess you can call it. Um, and it's a fantastic game. It's, it's beautiful. And we played this game um, within the family and some friends very often. And, you know, we have the bags where you put the pieces in there and stuff like this. Um, it's absolutely a brilliant game. The premise of the game is... Um, you can either be the allies or, um, or the, you can be the axes or the allies, right? You could either be US, Japan, uh, US, um, UK, and Russia, or you can be Japan and Germany, and you can play with maximum five people, or you can play with two people, right? Um, we've played the original scenario a lot at the beginning, okay? Um, but at some point, we, we start modifying the game because the original scenario you play a certain number of combinations and it work, you know it does its thing uh, but right now for the last number of years I can't remember a couple of decades like at least 15 years or so whenever we play Axe and Allies we've been playing at sort of like risk where uh, you know we play up to five people and each person um, is a certain color right and basically we play it like risk where people start placing you don't have cars but you start placing um on the on the map and you get a certain amount of uh, ipcs icus or ipcs i think um i forget what they stand for basically a certain amount of money where you can buy your weapons and stuff like this and you have to figure out um the you know you basically your budget you have to budget your war i guess uh, and it's a fantastic game to learn how um, basically when it comes to in real life situations as well uh, the amount of funds that you have uh, barring any catastrophic mistakes you might make in the game um, the person who's making the most money per year and who can buy uh, the highest number of weapons usually ends up winning the war and if I remember um, I remember this overlapping with something I read, a paper I read, uh, um, 
I've read a fair bit and watched a fair bit of documentaries about World War II and Vietnam and Korea. I was sort of a war buff for a number of years. That's why you'll see a lot of war games here. Um, but one of, there was a paper that I read once, uh, which was absolutely fantastic, was when the U, um, during World War II, when the United States joined the Allies, um, as soon as it happened, I believe it was Churchill that gave a speech that said, um, basically, they won the war because the GDP, the combined, I don't think, I'm not sure if GDP was the, uh, was the metric that they were measuring there. I'm pretty sure it wasn't, it was something else. But the metric that um, world leaders were measuring um, for the equivalent of GDP, how much a country was making, producing, and stuff like this, in that speech, basically, I believe it was Churchill that said they won the war because their combined GDP of the Allies was now more than the combined GDP of the Axis, so they knew they were going to win, which is a tricky thing to say, right? Um, but Axis and Allies, this is the game uh, the board we're playing with right now, and because of the way we're playing it, we've, uh, you know, cannibalized uh, the older boards that we have, and I've actually got here, let me show you this one, this one too, okay, Axis and Allies, uh, the smaller one is a newer version. This is the older version, or one iteration of it, okay? And I believe uh, when you lay out the board for this, um, it's a little bit bigger than the newer version, but I think the newer version has done slight modifications uh, to the board. They've connected up a couple of places, um, and it's a better, better version of the game. Uh, even though the board is a little bit smaller. Okay, uh, here's another copy that we have, right? This one is definitely older than the previous one. Okay, and I think this is the first board we might have had. We sort of cannibalized it. And here's another one, right? Um, and for some reason, I think I won this. Uh, there's another game, game that I'm going to show you. Uh, but I think I won this one uh, at um, sort of a tournament, okay? I'm not sure if this was at a, this tournament or uh, that I'm going to mention, uh, but uh, it might have been somewhere else that I won this board, or I might have bought it, I don't know, okay? Uh, I think I either won this or a version of the other game, okay? So we got five Axis and Allies board games. Let me put these guys here. Okay, now. Now, when we got into playing Axis and Allies, and we got into playing Axis and Allies a lot in the 19, um, 1980s, okay, there were other sort of board games, war board games, uh, strategic board games that uh, the same company was putting out. And I believe at the time was Parker Brothers, uh, it might've been Parker Brothers, uh, Milton Bradley, uh, yeah, Milton Bradley, I guess. But one of the other games we were putting out was Empire, okay? And we played this a fair bit as well. Um, it's a simplified version of Actors and Allies. There's less type of weaponry you can have um, so it's a little bit simpler. The iteration aren't as many, uh, but it was a fun game to play for a while. And another one on the same level. Another one on the same level was, and this was fantastic, Shogun. Okay. And um, this was, you know, based on ancient Japan. You know, and it was... Um, ninjas, samurais, ronin, and stuff you can buy. And I haven't played these two games. I think last time I played it was like 20 years ago, 25 years ago, okay? But they're fantastic and they'll stay with me. And at some point I like to bring these out and find the right people if they're interested to start playing these games again, right? So these are two of the other ones that stayed with me from that period uh, when we started playing Axis and Allies. Okay. Now, 
let me show you there were games here that uh, I, I played the uh, the D and D Dungeons and Dragons when I was in elementary school a little bit, right? But I never fully, fully got into the uh, D and D realm, right? Me not personally, but one of uh, um, family did. And these are some of the games that I guess I sort of inherited. Okay, that have found my, their way to me. And one of them is, uh, you know, Dungeons and Dragons, the beginner set, right? The basic rules and this is complete okay you know it's got the two uh, player manual right and uh, dungeon master rule book in there okay so this is um, one of the sort of D&D type of games that have made it my way um, the forgotten realms sort of manual instructions and uh, and all the stats of the characters warfare in the classical world I got exposed to some of this stuff a little bit but it's so long ago that I can't remember <laughs> Warhammer fantasy roleplay And one other game here that I've seen played, but I never got a chance to play. Um, it should be complete. Okay. Hero Quest. And um, it looks like a great game. Uh, never got the chance to play it though. Okay, or haven't haven't had the chance to play it yet. I should say, because this isn't going anywhere. Uh, it's gonna stay with me for uh, well forever I guess uh, so let's put these guys here so those are some of the D&D uh, &D type of games um, that I do have Those were uh, games, and one game that I bought, I think I bought this, I bought this in the 2000s possibly, okay, um, and we played it a couple of times, about two or three times, and it looked like a good game, but we were just playing around with the rules, uh, Tenjo, uh, but it didn't, it didn't catch us, uh, so, you know, it's, it's almost brand new, uh, played like three or four times, and at some point I'd like to try it again. It's a great game. Well, it looked like a great game. Okay. One game that I have played uh, a lot, a lot. Not as much as Axes and Allies, but um, it's one of my favorite games. Like Axes and Allies, out of a rating, I would give it, you know, it's a 10 out of 10. Uh, it's a game you always go back to. And another game that's a 10 out of 10 is Diplomacy. Really. This game is absolutely amazing, but it takes a certain temperament to play it. Uh, and I love this game. And I've, uh, you know, if you've been on my site for a long time, if you moved around a little bit, checked out some of the playlist. Um, I had the opportunity to attend the 2007 World Diplomacy Championships and DipCon 40, I believe. Uh, that was the number on it. And I love this game, I love playing it, but it, it was gonna be such a great event that I decided to sort of document it. So I moved around, I didn't play a single game um, during, the, during the tournament. But what I did was moved around and I brought my video camera and I recorded um, the game what was going on for i forget how many days it was uh i think four days four or five days three days maybe um so for the duration of the tournament what i did was interviewed people 
um, got them their perspective on diplomacy. Um, I videotaped some of the some of the uh, moves that were happening, uh, some of the dialogue that was going on, and I ended up videotaping um, one game almost from beginning all the way to the end. Uh, there's a story to that and that was a fantastic game and all of that stuff is in the games playlist on my channel so if you want to get a feel for what diplomacy is um, it's absolutely amazing and I highly recommend it and I uh, I wish more people played it it was more prevalent uh, within society because it teaches a lot about uh, diplomacy like world politics and how things play out um, and it has the, has the tendency to make enemies out of family and friends um, if you're if you're faint at heart you can't handle betrayal and just things not working out the way you thought they were gonna work out stay away from this game but if you like high intensity games that minimal rules there's no dice or anything like this minimal rules uh, but very 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 heavy and very engaging okay fantastic game now uh, oh just regarding let me show you this uh, just regarding uh, the the diplomacy the video that I shot for the tournament uh, there is some of the video that I haven't edited yet because I only I was only I was recording on really old school camera uh, camcorder they had mini DV tapes and I ended up editing one of the mini DVs that I had for the game that I shot almost to the end okay I still have to go back and edit the remaining footage I have of that game because and I will at some point I promise um, and what I ended up doing was collecting um, during that tournament I ended up collecting the rules that people wrote for their movements for diplomacy and this is the way you move you play diplomacy you write down your rules uh, whoever's playing them, you know, bag of these rules uh, when you're playing everyone at the same time writes down the rules you throw it into you know a little box where your rules are written and when the time is up everyone's rules are in so everybody's movement is simultaneous and you make deals with people and you ask them to support you doing this and do this and do this and you hope that everything works out but once you read the rules <laughs> once once all the rules are opened up and one person says they're doing this and the other person says they're doing this and you find out who's backstabbing who there's nothing like it in any board games i've ever played is very unique experience now one other game that i have bought um, in recent years and we gave it a try we tried playing it but um, it didn't stick and it's a good game I'd like to try it again in a more lighter setting or was uh, uh, or is Car Coson, Carcassonne I don't know how you pronounce that um, it was definitely fun to play and it has multiple variations like you build your board as you're playing um, it's a sort of tile system and it's a very fun game Oops. and it's a very fun game and at some point I'd like to play it again show you some games that I've bought at a, at a at a garage sale we were trekking through the United States um, we're in an RV and stuff like this and we stopped in Washington State uh, we stopped at a at a garage sale and we didn't have any board games with us so they had these board games for sale one of them was uh, I ended up picking up and never got around to playing them uh, Trivial Pursuit, Pursuit. And Trivial Pursuit is not really my game, but there was other others that were uh, into it. There's Ploy, 
like these are from the 1970s I think from the 1970s uh, they look great uh, they have like pieces in them and stuff and you build some of it okay This one looks like this in the back. Take a look. Right. Now this one again is board, board base. And they were all, you know, as far as we know, they were all complete. This one looked amazing. Twix. Didn't get around to playing it. I love to play it. Uh, try it out. And the board looks like this. Sort of like 3D-ish. Breakthrough. And we bought these ones, uh, I think we bought them for like two bucks each or something, or a dollar each at the garage sale. What a fantastic set. Right? What a fantastic set. Look at this. sets are absolutely amazing they're my treasure I guess uh, and these are games from Avalon Hill okay and Avalon Hill um, I think it's come back again I don't know and you know I should have read up on their history I knew about Avalon Hill the history of them uh, a long time ago but they were one of the original board gaming companies and then you know they went through hard times and i believe they went bankrupt and someone bought them out and stuff like this um but they had some of the most brilliant games around okay. and they still do uh if they're around you know if they're still kicking it and let me show you the game that i've played the most and i would spend you know weekends playing this game you would come home from school on friday and friday night you start playing and you go you know sometimes finish sometimes you know you would play for like seven hours eight hours 12 hours you you'd be finished the next morning right sometimes the game would carry on and you could tell it's going to go on for a long time and you know you start friday night you go to like three o'clock saturday morning you give it a break you go to sleep you wake up you play all saturday you go to sleep or you you know you go do some stuff you were supposed to do and then you come back sunday and you finish the game sunday so it's a whole week long weekend long game and it's squad leader this is the one i've played the most and this is the original set that we bought okay and again we went through when it comes to squad leader we went through all the iterations um, with the map and i'm going to show you this map that we have check this out you have a string with a rope in it because line of sight matters in this okay uh, they take a while to learn the rules uh, the avalon hill games or squad leader anyway uh, it's very intricate this is a map of the city and it's hex base and it's got four of these guys there's a four or three i haven't played for i haven't played squad leader for over 25 years now right on this board and you sort of take these things and put them together and they're hex base and they match each other um and there are scenarios here let me pull these out let me take a look um, here's a thing it's on the side actually this is how this is how long it's been the plastic is like crumbling and these are some of the pieces that you have for squad leader they're sort of let me put these guys out what a brilliant game what a brilliant game and you have
have your troops they're like men and you have your stats on there like these numbers here four six seven they have meaning um, it's their attack their defense and their moral morale and stuff right and this game is absolutely brilliant it's got let me pull out some of these guys <laughs> let me show you the rule book <laughs> and i don't think we even implemented all the different types of rules that you had we rarely ever did parachuting and i believe there was parachuting here so this is the rule book right and the text on this is small very very small uh, and it's how many pages 23 25 and they have charts and data and a lot of these things were historically accurate in terms of you know the weaponry you were using and the, the technology available at the time right here's what the units are worth their cost there's lots of budgeting and gdp well not gdp but whatever it is and this is sort of world war ii scenario and you know you have your rules here that you read and these things were actual scenarios right so scenario number five right you can see it there and you know they had a name for the battle hill 621 and they told you on the side here right what happened what was going on what the objectives were and they have you know the bottom here is german troops the star is the american troops and you know they tell you what pieces you had what you have on the board where they're supposed to be and then you go through your turn you try to play them out right and for us um we went through all the scenarios multiple times some of the scenarios are very difficult to play uh, some of them are really one-sided and you know it's you're just supposed to hold out for a certain number of rounds until you're annihilated right so some of the games are taking over areas some of it is just holding off the opposition long enough for something else to happen uh, brilliant and at some point we sort of um, like axes and allies we sort of created our own scenarios where we gave each other a certain amount of funds and we started buying units and putting the map together and created our own sort of scenario and these are some of the stats that we had of who was getting what right leader men german hmgs and mmgs and stuff like this artillery and whatnot um amazing game uh, this game uh, in combination with Axis and Allies and uh, some other board games. Uh, if you want to know what's happening politically, uh, global uh, diplomacy and global politics, I know, you know, I've made, uh, put together because people were asking me, you know, about politics, geopolitics and stuff like this. So I, you know, put together some politics videos and specifically related to the economics of politics, right? um board games are a huge factor in trying to understand for me they have been anyway trying to understand diplomacy and how governments function and how society um, or countries position themselves based on uh, geopolitics geography based on their gdp based on their technology right so if you really want to understand politics geopolitics and stuff like this board games are a great way to understand a lot of that as well as economics um, so that's my little tangent regarding this squad theater absolutely brilliant game and at some point i hope that i'll meet someone where we can start playing again because um i haven't played it for 25 years plus right um for multiple reasons um, another game on that same level squad leader that i've played second most when it comes to my avalon hell collection here is panzer blitz and this is more of a larger squad leader goes zooms in right so you can go inside cities you have individual soldiers and stuff like this units 
Um, and Panzer Blitz is larger battles. There's a lot of tanks. The, you know, this thing encompasses large, bigger terrain, and that one's smaller terrain closer by, right? And this is a fantastic game as well. Uh, simpler than Squad Leader. And we started off with this one. This is the one we started off playing. Um, our first Avalon Hill game. This is this thing right here, Panzer Blitz, right? Played it a lot. Um, and then we got into more Avalon Hill games and we read about Squad Leader and we ended up picking up Squad Leader. And once we started playing with Squad Leader, uh, it was seldom that we went to Panzer Blitz because Squad Leader had, it was more intricate, more detailed. So you could do more. Uh, a couple other Avalon Hill games, actually three other ones. Uh, one of them is Win, Place, and Show. Uh, and we ended up playing these uh, between us friends and stuff like this. We get together if we wanted something light, lighter, nothing as serious as um, a diplomacy where people would get into arguments and fight, and sometimes people would be pissed at each other for days or weeks or sometimes months, right? When we want to play something lighthearted, win place and show okay it was a fun game uh again i haven't played it for a long time i haven't played any of the avalon hills games for 25 plus years okay another game we played a fair bit and it was a good game to play um was kingmaker okay and this was uh based in uh, the british empire uk um if i remember the map correctly it had scotland on there as well Bonf it at Ireland. The British Isles, I believe. Let's open this up. I haven't seen this map for a long time. Yeah, there it is. No, Scotland was not part of it. So take a look. This is the map of it. And it was a fun game to play. It had different variations. Uh, it didn't last with us uh, as long as Squad Leader, um, but it had its twists and turns. Uh, very fun, very fun. One game that we played a fair bit, and from the collection as well, it's one of my favorite games, and I actually have two copies of it, plus the expansions. Um, Frank Herbert's Dune. What a great game. And I start playing uh, Dune um, in the 1980s. This one I started playing in the 1980s. That's before I had even read Dune. And I love this game because I got into playing it because of the movie. So once after watching the movie, uh, I personally loved it. I thought it was fantastic. I know it doesn't get too much love, but I loved it. And we started playing Dune. So I played this a lot in the 1980s, um, a little bit in the 1990s as well. Okay, um, it's a fantastic game. Uh, and I didn't end up reading Dune until um, mid, mid, mid to late 1990s. And I tried to find people to play Dune with, and it didn't happen. One of the things I actually did was I met someone that, uh, recommended that i read dune that's the reason i read dune so they loved it and i after reading the book i really wanted to play the game again so i ended up buying i went online it was difficult to find this game because um what do you call it um avalon hill i think was going through the hard times then and there, there weren't too many board game board games or not and they weren't reprinting things right so i had to go on a forum ask someone um if they had the dune game available and um someone replied to one of the threads i started in um i think it was in mid 1990s i guess mid 1990s for sure uh where i went into i don't know what form it was and I said, you know, does anyone know where I could get the game of Dune? And someone said, yeah, I have, you know, extra copy with the expansion set. So I ended up buying the Dune plus the two expansion sets. And I remember this, I think it was for 50 bucks plus like, maybe it was 75 bucks including shipping or something like this. So here is the other copy of the Dune that I have. 
and I don't know if the date's going to be on this. This is 1979, so this might be my copy. And this was... No, this is 1979 too. Uh, so I can't remember. I think this might be my original copy. I'm pretty sure because I kept these guys together. And this is the other copy. And if you guys know which one came out first, please let me know. And here are the two expansion sets. The Duel, right? We never got around, um, you know, I try to get the people to be interested in playing Duel, but it didn't happen, right? So I've never played the expansion set, this one, or Space Harvest. Uh, at some point, I love. I would love to sit down and um, play Dune again. And this is like wishful thinking because it, each one of these games, if you want to really learn how to play it well, uh, like Axes and Allies is really, really easy to learn, and they're really fun uh, because there's a lot of iterations and it's very personal interaction. You interact with people a lot. Diplomacy uh, is easy to play as well. Simple rules, difficult game to master, very difficult game to uh, to be good at, uh, to be able to handle, okay? And then the other ones, um, uh, I don't know, Hero's Quest, I haven't played yet. At some point, I'd love to play it. But the Avalon Hill game, Squad Leader, Panzer Blitz, um, difficult games to learn. It takes a lot of commitment. Dune is fairly easy to learn, so Dune will be easier to find people to play with if you're if you're trying to find you know play an Avalon Hill game, um, and it's a lot of fun. And Kingmaker is um, is an easy game to learn as well, um, and it's not that difficult to learn the intricacies of, right? Uh, so that's about it. That's my gaming collection, and what I'm gonna do is. Um, I'm creating, uh, putting together another playlist uh, called Collections, uh, Show and Tell, I guess. Uh, and I'm going to start, you know, putting anything that I'm showing you, showing you a collection of uh, in that playlist. There's going to be a lot of comic books because I've shown you a lot of my comic book collection. Um, but I'll put the crystal collection in there too, the plant collection. Um, I do have a video game collection that I will show you at some point as well. Um, I've gone through some of the boxes and uh, there's some old, old school stuff there uh, that I think some of you will definitely love seeing if you're into video games. Um, and I have collections of some other things as well uh, that I might get a chance to show you. Okay, so um, I'll put everything that's uh, related to that uh, in that playlist. So if you're just interested in collections and uh, some of the things I have uh, kicking around being a semi-pack rat I guess uh, you can find them there okay that's it for now uh, I guess I'll see you guys in the next video